x, uh, so x is already a vector. So actually, I think in MATLAB, there's a special tool called PDE tool. It's another toolbox. It's not PDE PDE, which I think most people use for doing. It's actually a GUI, but I don't think it comes with, you'll have to check whether it comes with your version of MATLAB or not, but you can use that to set up 2D space. I don't think you can do that from within PDE PDE. This is one dimensional. Yep, so that you have also in PDE PDE, at the end of T-SPAN you can specify some options just like you specify options in ODEs, they're actually the same. All right, um, about Any questions about setting up these boundary conditions? Does that make sense? It's, it's I think, the most confusing part of this entire Exactly, exactly. About figuring out what values of P and Q would give you the boundary conditions. I mean, the initial conditions are much simpler to specify, right? It's just which spatial coordinate, what initial value you want. Uh, boundary conditions are a little bit complicated. PD fun, PD fun makes sense too, how to set up C, F, and S. Does that make sense? All the examples are posted so you can take a look at them. Uh, but yeah. You guys have done all these, like, I'm sure at some point you've done, like, there's a transport class that you guys probably have to take, no? A transport class, transport phenomena, reaction. But, like, re reaction diffusion models and some, you must have done them to some degree, too. Like, but, like, these. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I can talk generally about these profiles if people are interested. I mean, this, I said, so, of course, the time-based solution is complicated to arrive at, but the steady-state solution, this was for the first example, makes sense that it's linear. Just a second derivative set equal to zero, so you'll have something linear. In this case, at the elimination term, it was you know, differential equations you did, second-order linear differential equations, homogeneous, right? Those are sums of exponentials of solutions, or they could be oscillating, but in this case, it's just simple. And so this sort of the sharpness of this profile would be a function of the elimination constant such that if I go back to my example two and I increase the elimination a lot, right, which I can do here, so I can just make this 10 times the elimination here. And then if I run that, then I'll get a much sharper profile. So that's what governs that and then Third example that we were looking at, and the fourth example where we had like derivative-based boundary conditions, the idea there again is that not, you're not so much worried about the concentration, but worried much more about the derivative, the flux sort of becoming zero as specified. So that figure three, for example, here, where we had this case where um, John mentioned that we have stuff is not diffusing out, uh, so that's why you have this increase. If you put an elimination term, you would expect things to go down, but still, again, the main point would be that at this boundary, flux is going to become zero. Yep. Which, uh, so this is for example, three, the impermeable barrier yeah. one? Yeah. So it's right here, so yeah, so the flux, it is exponential, well, is it? The profile should actually at steady state be solved, 
this, right, actually. So you'll have your profile is going to look like CX, it's AX plus B, where A and B are some constants. And so I said X is equal to zero, so B must be one, right, because that X is equal to zero, the concentration is one. Okay, so I'm left with CX is AX plus one. Then I have, I take the derivative of this expression, which is just A, then that's equal to zero. That X is equal to 10, right? So A, so A is zero. That well, I mean, this is only at steady state. That at steady state, you would expect, I mean, this profile holds at steady state, right? So at steady state, A would be zero. That you just get a flat line. Right, so like you have an you have an infinite source at x is equal to zero, so stuff is not getting diluted out there, and it's impermeable at the other end. So everything is going to just approach one by the end. You run this run figure three, right? If you run this long enough, let's go to example three. So if I run this for instead of t, I say run it for thousand for a thousand time points. How stuff disappears. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So you could do, yeah, so I don't, so scope is a very, it's like an oscilloscope, it's supposed to be, which is not the most useful. No, it is very useful, but not the most. Um, you can just use two workspace. We talked about the two workspace block. I mean, plot it in map file. Does that, does everybody remember that? The two workspace block and then scope is not behaving properly. And they took so long to even add like a direct auto scale button to the two. I think some of the versions of MATLAB that you guys are using still doesn't have that. You have to like right click and auto scale. You don't see anything unless you auto scale. Yeah, is there exactly? Yeah, the second problem set, I mean, it'll be, I think it's supposed to be, you will know when you have the right answer, pretty much. That's the whole idea. Is you've seen a PV loop in the cardio lecture, and all the, the I basically gave a Wikipedia link in the, uh, in the problem set, and when you make the changes for simulating different pathologies, your PV loop should look exactly like what you get in those pathologies. Okay, um, if I had significant comments, I would probably meet with you and tell you. Otherwise, you did great. Most people did great. So. Uh, you will. I mean, I'm working on it. It's slow because I'm trying to meet as many people. If, you, if I've not sent you an email by now, it probably means you did 